Before I write a single line of Python, I plan everything in Miro. If you've ever built any type of application, you know how messy it can get because you've got roots, templates, a database, authentication, you name it. And if you're not organized, it turns into some real chaos. So today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how I plan a Flask app to launch all using Miro. And I do all this before I even touch VS Code. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh and I'm stoked to have you guys here. I have videos coming out every single Thursday to make sure you keep up with the beat. Make sure you subscribe and drop a like button. That really does help out my videos. When I used to first start my projects, I'd open VS Code, create a few files, and maybe scribble some things down with some pseudocode and just start building. And halfway through, it didn't even make sense. Nothing made sense because nothing worked correctly. I jumped right into the project. That's not what we want to be doing. For this, I now use Miro, and I should take a moment to thank Miro for sponsoring today's video. After creating a Miro account, you can see that you can choose from a variety of charts. Typically, I'll start on a flow chart, as this really just ha helps me map out my ideas. Now, after this loads here, I'm gonna start off by just giving it a name. This really just helps me get in the flow of things. And if I'm gonna send this off to the rest of my team, I wanna try and be as thorough as possible to really map out my ideas. Now, on the left here is where I'm really gonna start and put the name of what is this build that we're trying to make. This is just gonna be a simple Flask Notes application. It's just a really good idea to map out all your ideas here and just give a brief project overview right in this page. Now I'm, I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna map out each step of the process to come. I'm gonna start with brainstorming, building out my database, authentication, sprint, and that's gonna lead me to the launch of my app. Anything extra I have to touch up, like font resizing, coloring, I can just do that really quickly here at the end. This is my flowchart. From my flowchart, I'm typically gonna lean down here and I'm gonna to start to create more ideas just on a board. And I'm gonna start with my discovery phase, a really important phase, organization and visualization. Miro has these sticky notes that we can just drop in and use at really any point. So in the discovery phase, right, we're trying to map out what's my problem, who am I trying to help? What's unique about my product? In each of these bubbles, I just wanna plot my ideas that I can come back to later. So here in my discovery, I have core features in why is it unique? My visualization's gonna have things like, I'm gonna sketch my ideas. I'm gonna color code the blocks. And then my organization is really, how is the app set up? Right, outline routes, draft my database, the app flow, and then finally I can share it with my team. Once I go through each step of this process, you can see here that I'm actually drawing and connecting arrows. This is just the way my mind works, right? I'm mapping through the stages. Now that I have this really cool sticky note page done where my ideas are, I wanna create something to help understand the flow of each section. To do this, I use the mind map in Miro. This is really good because I can create multiple branches and really connect my concepts and ideas. So I just drop in that mind map here. Generally, I'll name it something and I'll give it a brighter color that is gonna just be easier for me to see. And within each of these minds, these parallel lines, I'm gonna drop in the different stages, right? So user authentication. I'm gonna have things like my notes CRUD, create, read, update, delete, my dashboard, and then our database. Each of these is a key step in the process. As I go through user authentication, I'm just creating what needs to be done in each section for this to work. I might miss a few things, that's okay, I can come back to it later. Just getting my ideas here and seeing how they're structured out, it's gonna help me go through the steps of it. Anything I miss, I might just be like, hey, team, do we have to add anything more? So I'm gonna drop a sticky note. Finally, just gonna connect a few things here by arrows, get them all mapped out. 
Then we're really gonna move on to the architecture phase. So I'm just gonna head over to my first flow chart and I'm gonna copy it. I really like their flow charts. Um, I can connect them, I can visualize the process and the flow of the application. So getting the architecture set up would be the next part. What's this gonna look like? How is this going to act? Just little details like that. I have a user client, that's the browser, who connects to our application, our Flask app. All Flask apps have roots templates in a database that we can set up. This is just the general flow that I'm mapping out here. And each of these, right, our roots are just our, that's the Python code. The templates is all of our HTML and authentication with the logic to add or log in a user. The roots have to connect to our database two ways, which is a double ended arrow. And then our SQL database links to our authentication, which sends us back to our roots. All in all, this is the authentication, the architecture flow of how things need to be set up. What do each of these do? You know, I'll just drop in a quick Quick note to remind team members, hey, this needs to store user data, the notes, all the info. Our authentication section is to manage the sessions, log in, log out, all that kind of stuff. I now just have a general flow down. That's all that really matters, right? Each step of this process you can see, I'm just trying to map my ideas out so I can come back to later. Going forward, now it's time for the database creation part. For this CRUD app to work, it's a simple notes app. I just choose a grid, and this grid is gonna represent a single table in my database. This first one is gonna be for a user, right? So what information could a user have? They're gonna have an email, a password, a name, just things like this. And this represents one database model in SQL Alchemy as I build it out. So I'm gonna go through here, create what I need in this, and this will help me create the model later and what libraries I might use, what do they represent? Once I'm done aligning everything, this was just the first table. The second table is gonna be for a note, right? So every user has access to their own table, which contains all their notes. These two tables, while they're in the same database, they need to interact with each other. So I just kind of draw some arrow flows here to signify that, hey, table one needs to communicate with table two and vice versa. It's kind of like a loop. And these just represent the table tables that we'll have in the SQL Alchemy model. Now, all this is really good. We're getting close to actually the sprint part, but first I need to create my authentication system. What is the authentication gonna system gonna look like? More importantly, how basic is it gonna be? Is it just gonna include emails? Should I include OAuth with the ability to log in with Google? That's kind of what I'm gonna map out here, but really just going through each step of the process. The user logs in, the root receives data, I verify the user's details, do they match, right? Can the user log in with that? If yes, okay, great. That means I'm gonna create a new session and give the user access to their dashboard. That's a win, that's what we want, that's the general flow. If the user cannot log in though, that's a bigger problem. We are just gonna send the user back then to the original starting point to where they can log in. This is the flow right here, right? To mark for my team, hey team, are we gonna use OAuth, Google, GitHub, LinkedIn, et cetera? Or is it just gonna be email? I'm just gonna drop in a few sticky notes there. And then if they can't log in, I throw a warning and I can color code these sticky notes. So maybe I could say, hey team, all the red ones are bad, all the green ones are good, and yellow's neutral. Being able to color code those is really useful for us in the Miro flow of things. And finally, Miro has now introduced a Kanban board. This is really like a sprint board, which is really cool, because my final flow, once I build out this project, I can mark down what do I need to do, what am I in progress of? And then what have I already completed? And when I send this off to the team, this is really where everyone's gonna be working and looking and adding new tasks in this Kanban board, my sprint board. And as we go through, I can mark those off, but all of these link back to my original vision of the project we had together. One final connecting arrow saying, hey, this is that. And that is my overall mind map flow. This is great, this is my ideas. When I hit that share button, I can send it off to other team members.
<laughs> Long story short, guys, this is how I map out my projects in Miro. I do this before I even code to really just create what's going on in my brain to get it on the computer. It helps me see my thoughts, map out my ideas, and make sure that my flow is down before I jump into VS Code. If you guys want to get started with Miro today, head on down the first link in the description. You can check out Miro there. Guys, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, hit that like button, subscribe. I have videos coming out every single Thursday. Until next week, Python crew, I will see you then.